This is Guardians of the Galaxy. A few months ago, the convention promoter sent me this. He runs Mount Shasta Comic Con as well as Sundial Bridge Comic Con. Those are two conventions that I go to every year. He's a very very good convention promoter and he sent me this as a surprise which is very nice because I also worked on this issue. If you looked in here, look at the credits on the ink of this book and this was a variant cover. I've never noticed this variant cover before. So when I worked on this I got the regular cover but not the variant cover. So when I got it I just didn't think of anything of it. I just thought it was pretty cool. I got a snap coming of something that I worked on. It was a gift that he sent me. And then I read it. It says right here CGC sign series and I looked I didn't sign this I don't even remember seeing this and I looked and look and right over here that is Stanley's signature right over here see CGC signed by signed by Stanley that is so cool I'm gonna show that Stanley's signature yeah, it is, it's hanging right next to my drawing room, so I'm very proud of this. Look, you even see Groot in here. You see Groot? That's Groot. Which I'm going to segue into today's Inktober video. I'm going to leave my mask on because Halloween, everyone likes cosplay. This is Groot, and I'm going to show you how to draw this from beginning to end. How to sketch it, how to pencil it, and how to ink it. When I worked on this, I decided, you know, like in my previous Inktober videos, you'll see me taking the artwork and I'm constantly spinning it. I decided I'm gonna use a crow quill and I'm not gonna spin this page at all. I'm gonna try to just draw it standing still this way. So without further ado, uh, well, before we head on to the video, let me tell you a little, a little bit about me. My name is Walden Wong. I'm a comic book artist for Marvel and DC. I, you can check out my website, it's waldenwongart.com and also check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash waldenwongart. There, you'll see a lot of good stuff there. And now we're gonna head on over to the video. Here we go. Okay, this was another viewer's request, a drawing group. So I sketched out two group layouts and it's just stick figures and group was pretty much fairly easy to draw because I don't really need to draw any human anatomy. Don't need to worry about muscles, biceps, arms, fingers, normal regular fingers, toes, shoes, foot. I don't have to worry about any of that. It's just the basic shape of a human figure. And then when I'm sketching this out, I'm not even sketching everything in detail. Sort of like how my previous Inktober videos, I'm drawing the whole anatomy making sure everything is there in the right place before i draw the costume on top here i'm just drawing like a bubble stick figure and then i'm roughly drawing some of the tree branches and some stuff and vines and branches all over the place and not and i'm not even drawing in detail like some of my inktober videos because i figure with this group piece oh yeah check check that i was drawing a uh, groot's head upside down I turned it upside down because Groot's head, to me, it looks like the bottom of a tree trunk uh, on the floor. Just like his feet, his two feet with the toes, it's just like the bottom of a tree trunk as well as his head. So I turned it upside down and just drew a bottom of a tree trunk. And I just started drawing extra branches taken out from his body. And in this phase, I decided I'm not going to draw everything in detail. I'm just going to draw in ink. So... When I start inking, I'm just going to go in there and start adding details into Groot as I go. I did, however, want to make sure the face was drawn nicely. Originally, I had him with the mouth slightly open. And then I decided I'm going to have him more menace looking. Sort of with his jaw wide open, getting ready to yell, I am Groot. Something like that. Or I'm Groot. So with this piece, I decided I'm going to go in here and ink everything with a crow quill uh, just with a crow quill and no brush this time I'll, if you've been following some of my inktober videos you notice that i've been using a lot of brush work because using a brush is just so much faster i don't have to constantly dip the brush into the bottle of ink with the quill i i constantly need to feed it because after a few lines you just need to feed it over and over again but for this video not only did i decide to use the crow quill as much as I can. I'm also going to try not spinning the page, keeping the page upright from beginning to end as best as I can. Every so often, I'm, I have a tendency to want to turn the page with my left hand to spin it around so I can get 
the right uh, angle for my right hand, but I decided, okay, for this video, I'm just going to challenge myself and not spin the page at all. You'll see me constantly feeding the crow quill, and that did take a long time. I usually put my bottle of ink on another table because I'm drawing on a slope table. My table is 30 degrees angle, and I can't really put a bottle there unless I, I tape the bottle onto the table. But if I tape the bottle onto the table, there's a good chance that something will hit it and it will fall out or something. I've seen other comic book artists. I've been to their studio or I've seen their studio. And they'll actually tape a whole bottle of ink there. I just decided to have two tables. One regular drawing table that's slanted. And then right next to it, I'll have a flat table where I put all my art supplies. And that's flat. So I usually put my bottle of ink on the other table. So here I'm just going here and inking all the tree branches. And in previous videos where you'll see me inking all the holding lines, with Groot here, I'm just inking as I go. And I'm drawing in the branches. I'm drawing them twisting around each other, putting in all the details later. Right now, I'm roughly a little bit, I'm creating some anatomy of a human form. And then at the same time, I'm also using the branches to form that shape of the anatomy. Like for example, his chest, or you would notice it more on his uh, torso where, where regular people have a six pack, but group doesn't have a six pack. I drew some branches underneath and around to, to resemble a six pack, just to give it some kind of a form. And then on the bottom of the feet and toes, I gave it some rounded area to make it look like it's fingers or toes that's able to bend. And then here I also drew tree trunks or su superhero trunks, trunks, briefs, tree trunks. And then I just continue drawing extra branches uh, coming out. So Groot is a popular figure. I remember when I was working on Guardians of the Galaxy, Groot showed up a lot of times. Not only in Guardians of the Galaxy, I also worked on Guardians of Infinity. So that was a fun project to work on. And Groot showed up along with uh, Rocket Raccoon. He also showed up in a, a few other projects I worked on, but Guardians of the Galaxy is the one book where I was inking the Groot around, along with all the other characters. And all the other characters I remember on that project, I specifically use brushes on all the characters, but with Groot, I only use a Kroko. The reason I'm using a Kroko is because the Kroko can give me that edge look, that corner feel, that sharp edgy look how with you know with a brush when you're inking and you're inking a line you get that smooth line it's a little bit harder to create at a 90 degree angle with a brush but when you're using a crow quill you can draw a line quickly turn another direction and draw another line and then you'll get a good 90 degrees or 40 degrees a nice angular line because trees in my opinion are very angular and not really smooth, I decided to just use a crow quill completely. And then when I started twisting some of the tree branches in and out, that that was the fun part. When I was thinking this screw here, I wasn't even thinking about inking human anatomy. In my head, I was thinking about tree trunks, tree branches, how branches uh, twine around one another. So as I'm drawing, as I'm inking, as I'm drawing while inking, I'm thinking in my mind, the texture of a tree. And when drawing this Groot, I decided to draw the Marvel version. I remember Groot, when he first appeared in Marvel Comics, he was sort of like a monster. So I wanted him to have this monstrosity look to him. I did some research and I noticed that Groot has these round bulbs on his chest. I don't really know what those bulbs are. So if any of you guys know, please comment down below. Let me know. He has a few bulbs on his chest, on his leg, on his arm. So that's Pretty interesting. So in the movie, you see Groot nice and like smooth, almost like a polished uh, tree. But in this one, he has branches going up all over the place. And for me, drawing monsters and inking monsters are fun because I can just draw, go in there and be very creative as I'm inking, as I'm drawing, and then think about what I'm going to add as I'm drawing. So from the beginning of working on this Groot, I didn't know how this Groot was going to turn out until it's done because I'm con continuously adding details along the way. 
So here, after adding all the branches and everything, I'm using the quill. I'm going in there and I'm adding shadows underneath branches. If there's a branch overlooping another branch or being seeped underneath a twine or something, I'm adding a little bit of shadow just to give it a little bit more depth. And I'm also creating a thicker holding line with the quill. So to do that with the quill, what I'm doing is I'm pressing the quill down harder on the paper to get a thicker line. Because with the quill, it's like two tips, and when you press down, that tip opens up, and when you're dragging that tip, it creates a thicker line. When you're inking with the quill, you can press down harder to get a thicker line, and you can hold it lightly to get a thin line. To master the quill, you should learn how to control how much pressure you're pressing down on the quill and how much pressure you're easing up by gliding that quill on the paper. And... You should be able to do that with one line. For example, you should press. You should learn how to press down, ease up, press down. As long as you're able to do that with a quill and be able to control that and the line is not shaky or crackly, then you'll be able to use a quill quill pretty well. I remember when I first started using a quill, I was in art class in, in school. And one of the subjects were learning how to do pen and ink. And it was this was the same style of quill quill I was using. Also the same kind of ink. I used it, I dipped it, and I hated using quill quills. I, I remember when the class was over, I said to myself, I'm never ever going to use a quill quill. And who knows? Like Fast forward to when I started working in comics, I'm doing it for a career. So that's interesting how that turned out. Yeah, but back then, I used to break the quill quill nibs. I pressed down too hard. I remember even, even in school, I would drop the quill quill. It would roll off the table and fall into the wooden floor. And I remember one time, one of the quill quills would just hit the floor, almost like a dart, hitting a dartboard. You're throwing a dart in a dartboard, and it would stick to the wall. But it was sticking to the floor, all standing up. And I thought, wow, that's pretty sharp. I've been poked by a quill. Uh, Inks has splattered in my eye because I broke nibs and it would just spatter right in front of my face and some of the ink would just spatter in my eye. So working with ink for so long, you have interesting experience. One time I even uh, accidentally stabbed my hand while drawing. I don't know how that happened and the ink got into my hand and then now I have a little tattoo of a dot. Uh, back then I heard that... Uh, these India ink that we use for inking comic books, they used to use that to tattoo people. So it's the same type of uh, ink to tattoo. So now I have a permanent dot of uh, ink because of uh, a little bit of stabbing from the uh, quill quill. Anyway, back to Groot. Now, all these little details, see those little orbs on his chest? I really don't know what those are. Maybe they're headlights so Groot can see at nighttime because you usually in the forest it's dark and he can't really see so he needs to light up so he can see you know if you think about it if a forest is dark and you're a tree you don't really need to walk around why would you need headlights anyway uh, i digress so this usually happens in my mind i'm working on the character and i'm thinking about the character and when i see certain details i'm thinking about how does that work and i'm thinking to myself how would these headlights work what is the purpose of that how I mean, what's the reason for having that design there? So what I'm drawing is almost like a meditative meditative zone I'm in. I'm thinking as I'm working, and I think about a lot of uh, funny stuff. So on the foot there and the toes, you see me drawing these curves, these curves around each uh, toes or fingers, just to give it a feel that it, it can twist and bend. And then here I'm adding little tick lines. I decided to go in here and use a micron because using a quill, it would just take way too long to finish this piece. I could just do it with a micron without having to dip the quill into a bottle of ink. And just a little faster. All I'm doing is a lot of slight shading, little tick tick lines here, little hatch lines here and there. And just would be a little bit faster. I was going to use a quill to do the whole piece just to see... Just to be able to say I did the whole thing in quill, but it would just take way too long. So I decided to go in there with a quill and add very minor little details. And this part is usually faster. And then like I said in previous videos, certain tools can create the job faster, but every tool can create the same type of texture and look. So knowing how to use your tools efficiently is always best. If you know how to use brush efficiently or micron or quill, it will always help you 
when you're doing the work with the speed of your project. So here I'm pretty much finished with the Groot and adding on details. And earlier, you see I signed my name, Walden. The W was a little scratch that was an error. So I went in there and made that part of the W to hide that mistake. So there you go, that's how I worked on the Groot from start to finish. And I want to thank Chris, the person, the convention owner that sent me this. He runs Mount Shasta Comic Con and Sundial Bridge Comic Con. If you're in the Bay Area and that convention opens and we're safe to go again, I would be happy to uh, meet you guys there. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification button so anytime I upload a video, you'll be one of the first to see it. Um, so until next time, stay safe. Happy Halloween, trick or treat, and don't eat too much candy. Take care. Bye-bye.